Hi, I'm Sean McBride. Welcome to the HTML exercise portion of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from the ground up course. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through how we would go about marking up an HTML page, just starting with content, and thinking just about content and letting that inform our markup, not thinking about presentation. And we're just going to do that for an example piece of content that we have. So we'll set up the situation. Let's say that you're a freelance developer um, working with a new client. They've just sent you over uh, this document right here, which is basically just the content that they want to be on the home uh, the home page. They had a writer write this or something. Um, they've sent it over to you. It's just a rich text document, and they want you to turn this into a web page for them. Now, starting out, you're just going to write the HTML first. Uh, you're not going to think about presentation at all, even though some of this stuff, you know, we might eventually want to make it look nicer, have some colors, maybe be laid out differently. Uh, but for now, we're just going to think about the content, the data itself, and we're going to let that data inform which markup we choose to use. Um, so let's take a look at how that would work. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our web dev course zip file that we have here and unarchive it, open up the folder. And inside this folder, we have a folder called Exercises. That's where our exercise lives today. I'm just going to open up the HTML exercise unfinished uh, document. That's the one that we want to use. So I'll just open that up. Uh, you can open this up in any web. Uh, you can open this up in any text editor that you want to use. If you're on a PC, uh, don't use Notepad because Notepad won't understand the Unix line breaks that are in this file. Um, you can use WordPad, or if you want to have a nicer one that uses uh, syntax highlighting, you can try out Crimson Editor. I'm on a Mac, and I'm using TextMate, which is a really nice editor, and it actually has uh, it actually has support for uh, syntax highlighting and a bunch of other helpful shortcuts. All right, so here's the content of that page. It's basically you know just we copy and pasted that, and it's just a plain editor, so we don't have any formatting anymore. Uh, except for a few things like these stars for bullets that carried over. Um, but we're just going to start thinking about, okay, how do we want to mark this up? So let's start from the top. I guess that's the easiest way to think about it. First thing we have right here is this Web Developers Inc. Um, text. Let me go ahead and make this text a little bit bigger for you. Um, we have Web Developers Inc., this text. And uh, what we're going to want to do is just decide what element we should mark that up with. Any ideas? Um, it's the top element on the page. It's sort of the title of the page, and it's it's like the overall um, most important textual element. Uh, so we'll probably choose to mark that up with an H1 tag because it's the first header on the page. Now we wouldn't want to go and choose like H2 or H3 because we thought an H1 tag looked too big. Uh, that's again thinking about presentation, and the size of these header tags is purely a browser default. So we can always change that later in the CSS portion. Next up, we have this uh, what looks like site navigation, basically, for the different sections of the site. This is just the home page. And this is actually a portion that we're going to leave for you to do later on in the exercise. So we'll skip that for now. Next up, we've got related brands. Well, that's also a title, um, but it's less important than Web Developers Inc., which is the title of the overall page. Related brands is just a title of a section. So I guess we'll give that another header. We'll make it a two. Now we again we wouldn't want to choose three because of the size. It wouldn't really make sense to have an H1 and an H3 on a page with no H2s. Um, they only have meaning in relation to each other. So obviously we don't want to do that. And then we also have this other title here, sign up. That's probably about equally important based on the that document that they sent us, the sizes in there. We can just look at that again. Um, related brands and sign up, they had those as, as equal. Uh, importance here, so we'll we'll make this equally important. We'll make it another H2. Below that, we've got this big block of text. Any ideas what that should be? Pretty simple. Probably just a paragraph tag. It's a paragraph of text. Simple. That's what paragraphs are for. How about this bit up here? Got Altostrat Corp, Sister Company Incorporated, Organic City. Any ideas for that? Um. Well, it looks like it's basically a list, right? It's a list of three items. So we'll highlight that entire thing. We'll put it inside of an unordered list. Now, if Altostrat had paid to be first, 
um, then we might want to use an ordered list because the order would be important. But as it is, we'll assume order is not that important. And then for each of these items within the list, we'll just wrap it in an li element, which is list item. Okay. We also want to get rid of these uh, asterisks because that's really presentational cruft that's left over from our copy paste. Uh, we could, you know, use CSS to throw any kind of bullets that we wanted to on this list, or we could remove the bullets completely and do something totally different with it. So that's that's fine. Um, we might also want to go and make each one of these things a link as well, um, with an href attribute that led off to that company's homepage. Um, we don't need to do that for all those right now, though. <clears throat> now, how about this down here? Create a profile, first name, last name, date of birth. This looks like something that you may have seen on paper a lot of different times. It's uh, And we fill them out on the web all the time, too, but they don't look quite like this. It's basically a form, right? It's where the user enters data. So the way that you mark up forms is, first off, we'll wrap the entire thing in a form tag. And what that does is just tells the browser this is a form that the user can enter data into. Um, now, create a profile is sort of the title of the form. There's multiple ways that you might choose to mark this up. And uh, that's sort of where the art or the craft in, uh, in, in web development comes down to, is making these choices yourself about which of equally good options you might choose to do based on your own instincts and uh, your own requirements. So I think this time, let's mark this up as a header element as well. We'll have it be an H3 because it's subordinate to the sign up section, which is an H2. All right. Now, how about these lines right here? This is clearly a space where the content writer meant for us to be able to put in some information into the page. Uh, with HTML, we create a way to put in information with an input element. So we'll just create input. And inputs have an attribute called type, which says which type of information we can enter into it. First name, that's going to be a text input field. Um, input fields also always have an attribute called name. And this is the attribute that's going to be used when this uh, form is eventually submitted by the user and the browser sends that information off to the web server. Um, the key value pairs that uh, come from the form, these names are going to be the keys and the values are going to be uh, whatever the user typed in. So for this, we'll just choose a name of first name. That's pretty simple. All right, and we can go ahead and do the same thing for last name as well. Uh, type text and name last name. We can imagine doing this for date of birth as well. Uh, now, what about these down here? Gender, male and female. That's a little bit different. It's still an input, but it's not a text input. These are two options. Um, any ideas? I think we could maybe use radio boxes, we might want to be a little bit more progressive and choose to use check boxes instead. The difference between radio boxes and check boxes just being that check boxes are not mutually exclusive, whereas radio buttons are. Um, I guess we'll choose to be a little bit more traditional and we'll just go with radio buttons for these. So we'll do input type equals radio and we'll use the name again which is used as that key when it's sent to in key value pairs to the server. But another thing that the name does for radio buttons is it lets the browser know which of the radio buttons should act together as a mutually exclusive group. So these we'll call gender, and we'll turn both of them into radio buttons that have the same name. That'll help them operate as a group. Gender. Awesome. Okay, we'll move those to separate lines. Now, how about all of these, like first name, last name, male and female right here. Uh, currently, they're just kind of floating text, which is floating out in the middle of uh, nothing. It's not really marked up in any way. And even though we can kind of tell which is related to the input just because of proximity, there's no way that explicitly, there's no markup in this page that explicitly ties each of those, um, each of those bits of text to the input field that they go with. HTML does have a label for this, um, a tag, it's called uh, label. And the label uh, tag basically just allows us to tie a bit of content to an associated input element. Um, label takes a for attribute, which is an ID of an input element on the page. So this one would be for gender male input. 
Now we also need to make sure to give our input that same ID in the ID attribute. And remember, IDs are supposed to be unique on the page. So gender male input. All right. There's our label there. We'll create another one for, let's create one for first name as well, just so we can see how this works. Um, for first name, we'll make a label for attribute first name input. And then we'll make sure to give our input as well the same ID. So first name input. All right, let's take a time out for a second and take a look at how this, uh, what we've done so far looks in a browser. Um, so that I can show you how browsers can progressively enhance markup that's done well. Uh, so we'll open up our browser here, we'll make a new tab, and we'll drag our HTML exercise on finished in here. All right, so here's what we've got so far. It's already looking pretty good, and this is based on the default uh, styles that browsers provide for HTML. So by default, you know, they make headers big at decreasing sizes, they'll make links blue and underlined, now all of that is actually just a default set of CSS that the browser has behind the scenes so that they can make a page look like something. All of this appearance stuff about the size of things, the position, the font, everything we can change with our own CSS and add additional stuff later. So we don't need to worry about the appearance of it, but if a user, for example, had CSS turned off, they'd still see something that made sense because we have a uh, solid markup underneath. Another cool thing is, remember how we added those labels in? Normally the way to select radio buttons is just to click on the actual radio buttons themselves, right? Um, it's kind of a small click target and it can be hard to hit even for, you know, normal people who have their sight and, and have an easy time with the mouse. Now if you had a hard time with the mouse, it might be even more difficult to aim for these. One cool thing about labels is that all major browsers today make it so that when you click on a label that's associated with an input, that associated input element is activated. So male is activated. For female, we didn't set up a label, so it doesn't work. For female, we actually have to click on that radio button itself. But for male, we can click on the radio button or the associated label. That's pretty cool. Also, for first name, we set up a label. And for first name, if we click on the label, the associated input field is focused so that we can start typing information right away. It's kind of a neat feature that most browsers have, and it just goes to show you how when you use the appropriate elements for your markup, Browsers will take that and they'll run with it and they'll, they'll have uh, good consequences that you didn't necessarily even initially intend when you started writing your HTML. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's switch back to our markup here. Um, I think we're pretty much done with the page. We could talk about how to mark more of this stuff up, but uh, let's go ahead and pull a Martha Stewart and we'll just pull a finished example out of the oven, so to speak. So let's open HTML exercise partial in our text editor. All right. Um, here's a version that we had before, which we've already finished, and we've, we've done a lot more of the markup. So you can see that we've added a doc type, as we talked about. It's very important to have a doc type. We've got our wrapper of HTML. We've got a head with some title information. Um, we've got a body tag surrounding the whole thing. We've got division tags to divide up different sections of the page so that later on we might be able to lay those out differently. We've given things IDs so that we can uniquely identify them later on. Um, here's the part that we've left unfinished. So we still have this section, which is left for you. Um, and then, you know, down here we've, we've marked up the rest of our page with some additional markup as well. So now what we're going to have you do is go ahead and take this last unfinished section, this navigation uh, hierarchy that we have here, and uh, we're going to have you choose the markup that you would use for this and, uh, and try that out. So go ahead and open up this HTML exercise partial uh, file in your own text editor. And just go ahead. Uh, if you need a reference to HTML tags that are available for you and their meanings, in the utilities folder, we have a file called tags meanings. Uh, and that can be useful to you. I just write it here in utilities, tags meanings. You can toss that up in a browser, and it can show you, you know, the different tags and and uh, and what they could be used for. Just in case you need to know what tools you have at your disposal, go ahead and think about how you would mark this up. It looks like we've got um, a sequence of locations at the site here that we could go to, and then uh, under contact, there's sort of a subordinate sequence of additional uh, location options. Um, so go ahead, pause the screencast right now. 
and uh, take the time to mark this up for yourself in your own markup. And uh, then we'll come back and uh, we'll see uh, what we did. No, seriously, you should you should really you should pause the screencast and try it for yourself. I know you know it's it's easy to just skip ahead, but you you should really you should try it. You should try it. All right, so you're back, um, and you come up with your solution. All right, what did you choose to do? Maybe you chose to use a table because you wanted the options to be laid out horizontally. I hope not, because this clearly isn't tabular data. Uh, we don't have rows or columns. We don't have column headers or row headers. We really just have one row. Um, so it really it shouldn't be a table. Um, maybe you chose to use an unordered list and a nested unordered list inside. Or maybe you chose to use an ordered list. Um, when we were coming up with our solution for this exercise, we actually went back and forth about which was better to use, an ordered list or an unordered list. And uh, we eventually settled on an ordered list. So I can show you our solution if we go here in our exercises directory and open up HTML exercise finished. This is the completely finished version. All right, so here's the navigation that we chose. Um, basically, we have an ordered list with an ID. Inside of that we have list items with links for each of these uh, for each of these areas of the site. And then inside of the last LI, after the contact link, we have an unordered list for the, that subordinate navigation within contact of advertising, marketing, sales, and the CEO. Uh, now the reason we chose an ordered list is that it's probably important to the people who made this content that the home page comes first. And I'm pretty sure that the product team probably fought pretty hard in a lot of meetings to have products be the second link on the page instead of the third or fourth. Um, so the order of this is actually important. Now the reason why people usually wouldn't want to use an ordered list is because they don't want you know, the browser default rendering of numbers on the sides of the items. Well, as we said, you know, all that browser default rendering with CSS, we could change those numbers to be bullets, we could change them to be Roman numerals, we could change them to be images, we could even remove them entirely and reorient the list horizontally, which is what we'll do later on in the CSS exercise. So it's not really, again, you know, you don't want to think about the browser's default presentation at all when you're doing markup. You want to think purely about the semantics, the data that you have, and uh, what meaning you want to convey about that data with the markup. Um, another common gotcha that people run into on this part of the exercise is that they'll try to put this unordered list outside of that list item. So instead of putting it there, they'll put it here. Now the reason why this, you know, this will still render in a browser and it looks okay because browsers are actually very forgiving about rendering markup that's actually invalid because browsers want to be able to render as much of the web as possible. The problem with this is that um, as a part of the HTML spec, um, for HTML4, which is the version of HTML that we're using, um, it says that the only valid child for an ordered list or an unordered list element is a list item element. Any other child of that element is technically invalid. So a UL being a direct, uh, a direct descendant of an ordered list, that just doesn't make any sense. So, and if you think about it semantically also, um, this UL, this unordered list, this subordinate list, is technically you know, it's related to this contact list item. It's technically subordinate to the contact list item. So it should really be within that tag. So those are two of the common problems that people run into. Uh, I hope that, you know, you were pretty successful at coming up with a solution that you felt happy with. And if you chose different things, that's okay too. Um, as long as you have a rationale for describing why you made the decisions you did. And as long as that rationale is based on, you know, the semantics and the data uh, that you're marking up and not, you know, presentational choices. Um, so that's the HTML exercise. I hope you learned something about semantic markup and how to go about writing it. Um, we'll come back to this example later on in the CSS exercises and we'll actually use CSS to style this navigation to look a lot better than it does in the browser by default. Because currently if we open up in the browser, it's just, you know, a numbered list and an unordered list, uh, but we can make it look a lot better than that. Um, so for now, I guess you should head on over back to the presentation videos and watch the video for the CSS portion of the presentation. Thanks.